The latest that we've had from the NSPCA, which is apparently still aboard the Al Kuwaiti, the, um, the, what, the cattle transport vessel, which is berthed at Cape Town Harbour at the moment, with 19,000 cattle, minus about 10 that have died or been put down, subsequent to leaving Brazil, what, 10 days ago now, the information we have indicates the ship will depart the harbour tonight. We remain at the harbour until the vessel departs and feed is currently being loaded on. No more about whether the condition of the animals has been improved, whether any instructions have been put in place as to feed and water and cleanliness and so on. The SPCA, the NSPCA, which is taking the lead on this, not the Cape of Good Hope, but the National, in SPCA says it will issue a fuller statement tomorrow. Um, the photographs, I don't know if you've seen them, they're available via social media and some of the news reports on this have also had the photographs and they are, they are truly obscene, truly obscene to think that these animals are being transported with the with the discomfort of being transported at sea and then all of that that poop and the ammonia that comes from it it's just disgusting it really really is don pinnock environmental journalist has looked into this issue don good afternoon hi john um <clears throat> There are a lot of countries, uh, Germany amongst them, that send a lot of live livestock to destinations using the sea. Um, it's, is there any sense that it is an international maritime practice which is getting squeezed to the point where it might begin to disappear? I wish it was, John, um, but it's not, as far as I can work out, billions of cattle, pe pigs, sheep and goats and horses are transported between countries every year. Uh, there's 1.3 billion out of the EU alone. And the, they, they, they don't go out in good conditions. We've just seen what it looks like. Many of them suffer heat, cold, thirst, hunger, fear, um, and many of them die. Now, uh, John, these ships are floating feedlots. They're not only uh, animals are not only transported by ships, but mainly they are. I mean, 19,000 on this one alone. They're floating floating feedlots, uh, and feedlots are where most of our beef, pork, and mutton comes from. So, I think actually the stink that hit Cape Town should have been cause for reflection by anybody who eats meat. Um, it's the the conditions are, are are terrible on these ships. I did a story last year about a ship that was picking up the same ship actually that was picking up sheep um, in East London and they were because the rams might have caused trouble they were sawing off the horns at skull level um, it was truly horrific the NSPCA stepped in there as well but these transport ships are um, really really nasty things they mostly run by the Kuwait Livestock Transport and Trading Company. This ship, the Al Kuwait, has been here before. I think it's been banned from picking up um, uh, livestock in a number of countries. I think New Zealand, Australia. Um, but they are um, known for a, <clears throat> a whole lot, pardon me, a whole lot of uh, violations, uh, high mortality rates, mishandling, uh, violations of yeah. regulations, etc. So, I mean, the, I don't know whether there, it, it's possible to have a global law or whether each individual country that um, has a harbour from which livestock could be transported needs to ban the practice. And while there is this amount of money to be made, that seems unlikely. Well, um, in this particular case, and I think in a large number of cases, the reason for transporting um, these animals live is to do with halal. They, they're being transported because they need to be uh, slaughtered in a, in a halal way. Now, but that's, although, Sorry, John, then, but that's, that's nonsense because the Saudi Arabian government has done a deal with the South African Meat Exporting Organization, which allows for hal halal cut meat to be frozen in South Africa and then transported to Saudi Arabia. And you cannot, you cannot tell me that Saudi Arabia is, a, 
is, is a less diligent custodian of halal practice than other, other Arab countries. So if the, if the Saudis can be persuaded that South Africa can halal cut acceptably and is prepared to accept frozen and cut meat from South Africa, then I'm sorry, the other countries in, um, in that part of the world need to do the same. What I was about to say is that this ship violates halal. A halal demands kindness and respect throughout an animal's life, well-fed, healthy, free from disease, a compassion, respect for life. Now, um, that's fine at the point of slaughter, but it's not fine when the animals are delivered in such an appalling condition. So I am actually surprised. I, I think that if these countries are demanding animals uh, to be slaughtered in those countries in halal conditions they are turning a blind eye to the conditions by which those animals are delivered um so you know i i'm actually puzzled why they don't do what exactly what you say uh, what south africa does they they could have halal slaughtering in brazil frozen and transported to those countries um i i really am not sure yeah. why that's not being done because I mean, the Saudis came here, they were obviously impressed by the attention that was being paid to halal slaughter and, and, and authorized what potentially is a very significant export opportunity for South Africa. And, yeah, uh, it, it is, again, that profit motive, you know. Um, it is that. And <clears throat> there's another thing. I mean, if you look at those photographs, and they're truly horrific, the, the amount of excrement um, uh, that 19,000 cattle is, are producing, um, what the company said is that, well, it was building up because they were in uh, the harbor, but they flush it out at sea. Well, I mean, that amount of excrement going into the ocean is actually um, a problem, is a huge problem, because it will cause so much, will cause algal blooms, which can cause oxygen depletion right in the middle where they flush it out. So it's an environmental problem as well. Well, let's hope. That, well, I don't hope because I am bitterly cynical about profit over compassion. But let's hope that uh, countries think a little bit more about making this not legally possible. Environmental journalist Dr. Din, Dr. Don Pinnock, thanks for talking to us this afternoon.